Good morning and welcome to the final episode this week of Zion Dew. My name is Liz Kanye. This week I've been sharing faith stories and today I want to give you my personal story. I've mentioned before that I really, really love traveling. So in 2016, I received an invitation to attend this gathering of young leaders from all over the world. I was very excited. Before it happened, the Lord had told me that something was coming and that he was going to provide for me to be able to attend. So I went to my boss and I told him, um, this has happened. I've been invited and I want to go. And he was very skeptical. He did not want me to go and he gave reasons why. But remember yesterday I told you that sometimes God puts people on your path because he wants to grow you as an individual. So this was an opportunity for me to grow. And I knew that the Lord had said I would go. So I knew that whatever the boss said, I knew God was going to give me the way to go um, to overcome it. So he said, um, I will not allow you to raise money small, in small amounts, but if you get someone to pay your ticket, someone to pay your conference fee, I will allow you to go. Now, this was a whole faith thing because I had never raised huge amounts like that. The conference fee was about 100,000 Kenya shillings. The air ticket was about 150 Kenya shillings, 150,000 Kenya shillings. So I had never raised such amounts of money, but I had faith. I said, yes, I will do it. So I shared with my team leader and my team leader, uh, he looked at me and he thought, uh, this is not happening. So around that season, I, was, I had been attending a worship, um, some worship services, I'd call them, called Release the Sound. And during one of those, the leader said, um, you have to tell your body to worship the Lord, even when he doesn't feel like it. You have to. He, and he was explaining that when David was writing the psalm, my soul blessed the Lord. He was not at a place where his soul wanted to bless the Lord, but he was commanding his soul to bless the Lord because he knew there was benefits to praising the Lord. So I learned that and I thought, let me practice it. And then the Lord tells me, your weapon for going for this conference is going to be praise and dance so remember my faith is growing so i i danced and i praised i would dance in my house alone i would not miss any worship experience if i had there's a worship experience somewhere i was there so the first miracle happened i applied for scholarship for this conference by the time i was applying the scholarships had long been forgotten because they had already given them and they had finished so when I told some people that I had applied for scholarship, they told me, why? This was closed last year. I said, I have faith. And they looked at me and they thought, hmm. Anywho, I applied and I waited. And then um, I received an email that I'm about to be deregistered because there was nothing that was showing that I was going. And I told these people, I have applied for scholarship. The person I was communicating with, um, was a very nice person because she eventually gave me the direct contact of the person who was in charge of our side of the continent. So I wrote to him and I asked. I applied for a scholarship. I did not receive a reject. I did not receive approval. What is going on? He replied a few days later telling me that he had been away. He had been traveling and that is why he had not responded. But they have given me the scholarship and I did a dance. Remember this dance was not just celebrating but also praying for the journey ahead. So I got the scholarship. One huddle down, one to go. <clears throat> and I continued to raise money. Now, I was raising um, little amounts because I needed pocket money. You don't go to a foreign country without pocket money. So I was raising pocket money even as I was raising for the ticket. So the first person I spoke to, someone I challenged them to pay for my ticket. And this one, it looked like it was going to happen. He asked for other things and I would produce them. And I was so sure this was going to happen. And a few days later, he went quiet on me. And I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord tells me, forgive. I'm like, how do you forgive such a person who raises your hopes like this? And then he drops you like a hot potato. But anywho, I forgive. And I continued dancing 
and praising. I moved on. So a few days later, I met someone else and I told him that um, I needed this money. And he looked, this was a friend from, I had not seen him in more than 15 years. So, and he was doing well. And I thought that this one definitely will do this. So he said, yeah, I'm willing to do this, to give, because he was a believer and he was doing very well. In fact, he had told me that he was, he was looking for a, a nice car. He actually mentioned the car. And I thought, this must be the Lord showing me how moneyed this person is. So I waited for the money. He told me to contact him after a week. After a week, I contacted him. He said, no, call me again after another week, after two weeks. So eventually, I was away on mission um, out of Nairobi, very far, when he said, finally send someone to come in. He, said, he told me to go and collect the check. And since I was not around, I knew I was not going to let this opportunity pass. So I sent a friend of mine to go. This friend was um, one of my prayer partners. She went to collect the check and she was given a check of 30,000. Remember, I'm looking for 140,000. That was how much the ticket was going to cost. He gave 30,000. When I was told the check is 30,000, I was so deflated. I was thinking, what? I have been thinking this is everything. Anywho, I continued to pray and trust in the Lord. I continued to do my work. I did not tell many people. I only, I only had told like three people and they're the ones who are helping me pray. So one time, this lady um, tells me, one of my prayer partners, she tells me, the Lord has said that your miracle is with someone you do not expect. I'm like, okay, I'm holding on to this word. My miracle is with someone I do not expect. So I, I tried to think, who, is, who are the people that I do not expect? But I never, never even touched on whoever God was going to use. So I had planned to travel on Monday evening and I had faith. I packed my bags ready to go. But on Monday morning, I still did not have the money for the ticket. So I went to town. I needed to print um, the invitation letter. You needed a colored letter. And where I was staying, there were no colored printers. So I had to come to town, make my hair, and do final touches as I'm preparing. My bags are packed, and I do not have a ticket. So I came to town, and on my way, I received a call from someone asking, how is this going? And I told them the way I'm so discouraged because I don't have the ticket. That was the point at which my faith dropped. All these other times, I would get scares, but my faith would never drop. But that Monday morning, it was around mid-morning, that is when my faith dipped. Then I get to town, and then I bump into um, someone who had attended the conference before, and I told him how this is not happening. And he said, let me buy you lunch um, just to comfort you. So we had lunch and we talked. He encouraged me a bit. And then he gave me some money and he told me, this one go and ambia mwili pole. You know what that means. So on my way home, I, I saw some shoes and I thought these shoes would work very well in this country I'm going to. So I bought those shoes for the trip. Still don't have a ticket but I bought shoes for the trip because now that I, now that I had extra money. I picked um, an SD card that had some short films that I wanted to go and share with people once I get to the conference. And then I went home and that evening, my faith was boosted by something that was happening in the neighborhood. And I once again believed that I was going to go. So that night I did not sleep properly because I kept waiting for an email. Now, for some strange reason, I thought that my miracle was going to come through email. So I'd sleep for 45 minutes, wake up, check if there's any email, no email, go back to sleep. Again, after 45 minutes, wake up. That is how I spent my night. On Tuesday, I went for, uh, we used to have a staff meeting on Tuesdays. So I went for the staff meeting. And after the meeting, the boss called to ask, um, how come I've not received communication from you concerning this trip? I told you to raise all the money. And I'm like, um, <clears throat> I sent an email on Friday. It seems I will not be going. And then he said, um, I don't want you to say that I'm the one who refused you to go. So I asked him, are you saying that if I get the money, I have your blessing to go? And he said, you have faith? I'm like, yeah, a miracle can happen. 
your office can even give me money and I go. And he's like, oh, okay. So that conversation changed. Brothers and sisters, this boss who told me he will not allow me to go without having raised the full amount, he gave me money to go for this conference. He was the one I was not expecting finances from. So yeah, let's just say, within a few minutes, the ticket had been bought, and that night, I traveled for my conference. Now, the Lord was working on my faith. Later, a spiritual authority in my life told me that everyone has to fight their bear and their lion. So I guess that was one. It was either a bear or a lion, but I learned. After that, I know to trust in the Lord. It does not matter what is um, surrounding me. My faith has grown to a place of, um, when I hear the Lord and he says this is going to happen, I pursue that. And I know my faith is in the Lord, not in the substances, not in the items, not in what is happening, but in the Lord himself. And I pray that you too have been encouraged, that you will pursue, that even when things don't seem like they're working, you will know what the Lord has said it will come to pass and you will pursue it. May the Lord bless you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.